In this problem, we're told a satellite is in circular orbit around the Earth at an altitude of 2.8 times 10 to the 6 meters. Find A, the period of the orbit, B, the speed of the satellite, and C, the acceleration of the satellite. All right, so let's draw what's going on. So we have the satellite. It's orbi orbiting around the Earth, right? So this is the Earth. This is the satellite. And so we know the altitude, right? So the distance from essentially the surface of the Earth to the satellite is 2.8 times 10 to the 6 meters, okay? So we know that. And then we also know the mass of the Earth. Right, so the, or well, we're not given the mass of the Earth. It's something you have to know in order to solve this problem. But it's basically 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, right? And then we also, in order to solve this problem, you need to know g, which is basically the gravitational constant, which is just something you have to uh, memorize. So 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. You just need to know that. So let's go ahead and solve. So the way we're going to do this is by using uh, Kepler's third law, which basically allows us to solve for uh, the period of something orbiting a uh, around a planet, right? So basically a satellite right? Or whatever object, right? So the formula basically is, is T squared, or basically T is equal to the square root of four pi squared divided by G, which is the gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of the object that it's rotating around the earth, right? Multiplied by uh, the radius square or multiplied by the radius cubed. So make sure this is in parentheses. So yeah, basically four pi squared uh, over G times ME times the radius cubed. So how do we want to do this? So basically, uh, in order to solve this, right, we have G, right? We have the mass of the Earth, right? We know those. And then we need the radius. But we don't have the radius, but we can solve for it. So keep in mind the radius. When we talk about the radius, we're talking about the center of the planet to this, right? So they give us the altitude, which is the distance here. But we need this distance here, R, in order to solve it. So basically, we need to add the radius of the Earth, right, which would be this distance, to the altitude to get the radius that it's rotating, right? So we got to do that. So basically, we know the amplitude is 2.8 times 10 to the 6th. And then the radius of the Earth, you need to know that the radius of the Earth is equal to 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. Okay? So 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. And so what we want to do, right, is find, we want to add the, or the altitude, right, which is this right here. We want to add the radius. And this isn't drawn to scale. The altitude's way bigger, even though this number is bigger. But then we have... The radius of the Earth, right? We just got to add them up. We want the whole radius. So adding them up, 6.38 times 10 to the 6th, right? And when you do this, you're going to get that it equals 9180040s, right? You're just adding these two numbers, basically. So it's just equal to uh, this right here. And so now that we got the radius, right? So this would be in meters. Now what we can do is actually plug it in because we needed the radius, not the altitude. So you're just going to do T equals the square root of 4 pi squared multiplied by g which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 right keep in mind this is all under it and multiplying by the mass of the earth 5.98 times 10 to the 24 right and then this thing's in parentheses multiplied by the radius which we just solved for right sorry i'm running out of room 918 and then 100 zero and then keep in mind this number is cubed so yeah basically just plug this in square root of 4 pi squared divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 and then multiply that whole thing by 9180040s zeros cubed and when you do this you're going to get equals 8750444 and so on 98 so you can just round right so we can just go one, two, three. So just say 8.750 times 10 to the three, right? So 8.750 times 10 to the three, and then it's going to be seconds. So this is going to be the period or your answer to A. So now we know the period of the orbit. So yeah, that's your answer to A. Let's move on to B now. So for B, we're trying to find the speed of the satellite. So how do we do that? So basically, there's a formula you need to know for circular motion. Right, this is basically a circle, circular motion, which is basically velocity is equal to uh, omega, which is basically angular velocity times r. And so what is angular velocity? So angular velocity is the change in theta over the change in time. So what does this mean? So the way we're going to do this is think about how long or the change in theta of one orbit is. Right, So basically the angle change. It's just going to be one circle, right, which is 2 pi. Okay, So 2 pi over t. So what's t? t is going to be your period, right? The t is the time it takes to go all the way around, right? Because we want these to be equivalent, which is right here, 8.75 times 10 to the 3, right? And then we just multiply by the radius, and that's going to give us the velocity. So it's just going to be 2 pi multiplied by the radius, 
right? What's the radius? The radius is uh, 9180000 divided by uh, this right here, 8.75 times 10 to the 3. So when you do this 2 pi times 9180000 divided by 8.75 times 10 to the 3, you're going to get it equals about 6.59 times 10 to the 3. And so keep in mind, this is going to be in uh, meters per second, right? Because this is velocity. So 6.59 times 10 to the 3, that's going to be the speed of the satellite. So your answer to B is 6.59 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. But we can also put it in kil uh, kilometers per second. So we know there's 1,000 meters for every 1 kilometer. So you just want to divide it by 1,000 if you want it in kilometers per second. So this is just 6590, basically. And then you can divide by 1,000, right? So that would just become 6.59. So basically about 6.59 kilometers per second that's going to be the speed right so uh, you can write it however you want just make sure you do it how your teacher wants so that's these are your answers to b i guess and now let's do c so for c we're trying to find the acceleration of the satellite which is basically the centripetal acceleration that's what they're talking about here and so basically the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r so if you have the linear velocity which we just solved for in the last problem and you divide by the radius that's going to give you the centripetal acceleration and so if we want to solve, all we have to do is just plug in the numbers. So the velocity is 6.59 times 10 to the 3. Keep in mind it's squared. Then divide by the radius. So the radius is 9180000. So you want to plug this in, 6.59 times 10 to the 3. Right, square that. And then divide by 9180000. And so when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get a sub c. Right, so square this, divide by this. You're going to get a sub c equals... 4.73 about right so 4.73 and the units are going to be uh, meters per second squared right because we're using meters and seconds so your acceleration or your answer to c is 4.73 meters per second squared and then this was your answer to b and then a was just this right here so the period right so these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful